Hello Heathfield and welcome to the final week of the visual elements. This week we are going to look at colour. It is the final of the visual elements. I want you to this week create something which is called a monochromatic still life. What I would like you to do is to go out there, I would like you to look at the colour wheel and I would like you to go and choose one colour from the colour wheel. It can be a primary colour, it can be a secondary colour, it is your choice. I then want you to go and set up a still life on, with just those colours. So as you can see here, I've used the colour green. I have found a green lime, I have found a green water bottle, a green pencil crane and a green ball. I would then like you to draw it, I would like you to apply pencil crayon and I would like you to create an image that looks like this. So let me get going. I'm not going to demonstrate the whole of this to you, it would take way too long. All I want to do to you is just show you how I got going. So I'm just going to look at this first initial line that I drew here. So what did I do? The first thing I did obviously go and get myself a wedge of line. I then started to sketch out my shape. So we can all see, if I move my line and move over here, the line is semicircle. So I'm just doing this really quickly. I would like you to take way longer than me. I can see the back of the line, but then it starts to disappear around here as the shape obviously moves. I'm also, whilst I'm here, just gonna sketch in some of these segments. So I can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm keeping it quite light. I'm probably go, I would even go even lighter if I was you at home. I'm just going a little bit darker so you lot can see it online. So that's it, that's my outline done. So the next thing I need to do is find my greens. I went around my house. I got as many greens as I could find from mine and my daughter's pencil crayons. And that is what I'm mainly going to use. However, as you all know now from looking at the colour wheel, green is made of two colours. It is made of yellow and blue. So if I didn't have enough greens, if I wanted to make a lighter green, I would use a yellow mix with it and if I wanted to make a darker green I would use a blue. I want you to just use this single colour because I think it's really important for you to understand how to merge colours together to create different values of the same colour. I could have got you to do this still life just using complementary colours, however I felt then that by using complementary colours you could have made it vibrant and intense just by using those colours together. This however using a monochromatic colour scheme will make you really look at these colours in greater depth. So let's get on with it. So if I start with the back of my line, this is the area around here. I know that this is going to be a much darker shade. So what I don't want you to do is straight away is to press on really hard. The paper has a surface texture and as soon as it gets saturated with pencil crayons, no more colours can be applied to it. So whilst it may seem like a long process, sometimes that's what we have to do to get the colour right. So we're not pressing on really hard, we're just building up these colours gradually. So I've placed a much darker shade on there and then what I'm going to do whilst I'm here is take my lighter green and I'm just going to very carefully apply a faint bit of colour on these segments. The next colour I'm going to do, which is why ideally I would now rub out my pencil marks, I might try and rub a little bit out without you look, so you can still see just a little bit, is I would apply some white. Now if I applied white over my pencil, the pencil would remain trapped in there, so you would always see it. So I'm just going to really faintly rub out some of these pencil lines. If you've gone light, like I told you to, you don't need to, it's just because I'm demonstrating this for you. So this lime have this wonderful white area of the pith that kind of comes around here. Now whilst you can't see it right now, I just talked to you about this paper and it having this texture. It is filling that texture with white pencil cranes. So when I go to apply my other colours, that will remain there, which is great. So let me go back to this back section again. So I know that this is my darkest section, as I said to you before. So I'm just going to apply a tiny bit of black. So as we know that by mixing black in with a colour we're going to create a shade of that version. So this is where my shade is because that's my furthest area away. I'm going to take my other greens and I'm going to start to merge it on top. So you can see it's not a black outline, it is definitely blended together and I'm going to take another green. I'm going to start bringing it forward okay. So as I said I could see it. It does slightly because the now this is the bit I want you to look at. On my line it doesn't just go from green to white. 
So I very carefully pressing on, but then taking the pressure off as I move in, I'm getting that green to modulate, to blend into what is gonna be the white area, because I just didn't want it to have this strong mark. Now, if I didn't have this camera set up, for carousel on this chair again, I would turn my paper around. You can turn your paper around if it creates a, a smoother flow. So going back to this area again here, it's not quite finished. I can see that there's some tiny little dots in that lime skin. So we're creating that texture that we looked at last week. So just doing some tiny little dots. And then down here, because where the shade is, they're much darker dots because of that shadow. So I'm kind of going from black to green with that shadow. I will come back and do some more work on this, but I'm gonna to go to this front section now. So taking a little bit of yellow, oops, that one's broken, I'm just sharpen that quickly. So taking a little bit of yellow, I just wanna take a little bit of the edge off this pure white, because the white is actually being reflected on by all these different segments of lime. Now going back into where these lime segments would be, I can see where I'm sat, they're made up of lots of different like lines within the segment. So I'm using green, I'm using yellow to create those lighter ones. I'm also using some white and I'll go back in with my green again. So you can see I'm, I am constantly moving between different shades of green, different shades of yellow, different shades of white to create all these different textures. I'm alternating my marks so I'm not just using one straight mark and adding it I'm doing this variety within I might just take a little bit of that I don't want those white lines in there to be too broad so you can see using colors in this isn't just about going right I'm doing a green line let's just press on and let's just color it in green it's about using all those different colors. So if you've decided you wanted to do one, say on orange, then you're gonna use yellows and you're gonna use reds. If you're doing purples, you're gonna use blues, you're gonna use reds. Now, if you've chosen to do blue or red, for blues, you should have lots of different shades. Normally, you can find a light blue, a dark blue. You might mix some purple with that, some white and some black. If you are using red, you might use some pinks, some whites. You might even have a bit of orange in there when you want it to really show that warmth. So just make sure you are building up all these different colors within your line. Now you can see, I've still got quite a little bit of a way to go here. And you've been watching really patiently for quite a long time now. But the key is with this, you build up, you build up, and you build up. I'm gonna pause it there. I will finish it off and I will turn it back on in a moment. Okay, I've come back in. So what I realized I hadn't shown you, which I want to show you really quickly, is about this shadow that's been applied here. My line doesn't have a perfectly flat bottom because it's being cut, it's a piece of fruit, it's probably slightly shriveled as well. So I've had this line move up and down in here to create that kind of zigzaggy, jaggedy edge. A shadow is quite intense where it goes underneath the line and then as it moves out, I've taken my pressure of my pencil off, which creates this blended effect. I don't just want to have this solid black outline. I want to press it on, and then I want to take the pressure off. You've got to remember your shadow comes from where is your light. So I know because of where I'm sat, my light was coming from here, which is why my shadow is coming around here. In fact, you can see the shadow on this pencil. So look at where your shadow is. Make sure it's the same on all your objects. If it's not, it won't look like the same composition. Joy, stay safe. Upload your images to ePraise and I'll see you all in two weeks time. Bye bye.